okay on the next on the next line so what I'm gonna do is start copying everything over and when I get to that I'm gonna do something and now I want this to be a one here well that's easy I can just divide everything by or multiply everything times one-fifth so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll go ahead and use green here so we're gonna do one-fifth times row two and that's gonna go over here okay yeah, I think you're kinda getting the idea so let me go ahead and do that one-fifth times zero is zero one-fifth times five is one one-fifth times negative five is negative one and this is going to be negative two and we just go ahead and copy everything else over okay so now what we want to do is we want to get a zero here and uh, to do that we want to get a zero here then a zero here so this one would be easier to do so what we can do is multiply this row here times two and add it to this row here so two times um, row number two plus row number one and that's going to be equal to this so row two basically is going to be two times zero is just zero two times one is going to be two two times negative one is negative two and negative two times two is negative four so we're going to add this row to this row row two plus row one so zero plus one is one two plus negative two is zero uh... negative two plus three is one and negative four plus seven is three and then just go ahead and copy everything else down zero one negative one negative two zero negative four seven eleven okay now we want to get a four, uh, zero here so let's multiply this row here times four plus row three so there's going to be one zero one three and this is going to be let's do this so four times zero is zero four times one is four negative four negative eight and then what we're going to do is copy these down zero one negative one negative two and let me see zero plus zero is zero then negative four plus four is zero. Four, uh, seven plus negative four is a positive three and three. Okay, so now what we want to do is get a one over here. So what we can do is multiply um, row three by one third, and that'll change over here. So now copy everything over. One, zero, one, three. 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2. 0 times 1 third is 0. Same thing. 3 times 1 third is 1. 3 times 1 third is 1. Okay, so look, we got the 1's. Now what we got to do is get these to become zeros here. So what we could do is multiply uh, row 3 times negative 1 and add it to this, uh, to row 1 here. Okay, strategically I'm doing that because you see I got zeros here and they won't affect these numbers here. So what we're going to do is multiply row number 3 times negative 1 and add it to row 1. Okay, so let me move everything up a little bit. So we're going to get our new answer here. So row number 1 is the one that's going to change here. So let's see. Row 3, negative 1 times 0 is 0. Again, 0, this becomes negative 1, and this becomes negative 1. Then add this plus that. So 0 and 1 is 1, 0, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And then we just copy everything else down. So 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so what we want to do now is get a 0 here. We can add this row plus this row, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add row 3 plus row 2, okay? And that will give us this over here. So copy everything else down, 1, 0, 0, 2, 
and then 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, and then copy everything else down, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now the reason why I chose that is because you can add any two rows, okay? Not only that, but going through this problem, I just wanted to have you understand how to do it, but you can actually interchange any rows. Okay, so if you see it easy to interchange rows, just go ahead and do it because sometimes um, you may have a situation where a zero pops up where you have, you know, any, anywhere. And if it does, it looks like it fits and you can interchange any rows. Or if there's a coefficient already of one uh, on the corner, and let's just say it was over here, let's say the rows were all interchanged. You can move like row two to row one or vice versa, whatever. So anyway, so this would be the solution. Um, so x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to 1. Okay, so we can go ahead and check it by plugging into one of the equations. Um, so let's go back up here and look at what we have. You see the first equation, x minus 2y plus 3z. So let's go ahead and do that x minus 2y, x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 7. So if x is equal to 2, so let's go ahead and do this in green to check. So x is equal to 2 minus 2 times y, which is equal to negative 1, plus 3 times 1, which is equal to 7. So you see z is 1, y is negative 1, x is 2. So 2 plus double negation, 2 plus 3 is equal to 7. So that's 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. And you can go ahead and plug in um, the same numbers to check the other ones, but usually if you check one, they're all going to work out. Okay. So you can plug in this one, and you can plug in the variables into here and into here, and you should get the same answer. So anyway, um, that's basically it for this. I didn't get into too many specifics about interchanging rows or I'll do other examples like that but this was just to get the idea of, of this method here and as you see all you're doing is getting ones diagonally and you start off by getting a one here then a zero here then a zero here then a one here then a zero here and a zero here then a one over here a zero here a zero here and that's basically it when you have the ones diagonal like this then you got your answers provided that you have zeros everything everywhere else. And again, when the 1 shows up, that's talking about 1x, 1y, 1z. So make sure you label everything x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z. Make sure it's all set up like that. If your problem starts off like, you know, z, 4z plus 3x plus 4y equal to 1, well, inter uh, and the other one is like, you know, 3x plus y plus z and z plus x plus y. Rearrange it so all the x's are front. So you put this over here, this one here, uh, put this one over here, this over here, and this over here. I mean, you understand. You get what I'm saying. I, I just, I want you to just, you know, really get it. You have to make sure everything's in line. Put all the x's in one column, all the y's in another column. So basically what you want to do is if you get a problem where you know the letters are out of place, just make sure all the X's are in one column, all the Y's are in another column, and the Z's are in another column, and everything equal to the constants. So, um, and you see, I didn't write the brackets or the lines. I don't waste my time with that. Um, it looks pretty, but I, I just don't do that. Anyway, I hope this helps, and good luck with your homework and tests in the future. And thank you for watching.